Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Las Vegas. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Going bell to bell with the best in professional wrestling news, entertainment, and lots of Sin City surprises from inside the squared circle. Now, let's get to all the exciting pro wrestling action and bring on the host. Here is Mark Hoke. All right, let's do it again. Hour number two of the Mark Hoke Show here on KDON 101.5 FM, the talk of Las Vegas. The best in pro wrestling news and entertainment, not just in Sin City, but, you know, planetary. Let's go multiverse. Just wind it all up. There's a, there's another Ruben Bressler out there, too, I'm sure, in the multiverse. Oh, and for some reason, I can't hear Ruben. I don't know if he muted his mic, but we'll, we'll check on that. But we also have a very special guest. Whoop. Let's see. Let's try that. See if that happened. Ruben, I got you. I'm not sure why I'm not hearing Ruben. Oh, it's because his he muted himself. There we go. Hang on a sec. Mute. Ruben, you click on your unmute button. There we go. Muted and unmuted. There you go. There you go. You're good. You're good. Now you're gone again. We're we're having some troubles with Ruben Bressler. But um let's see. Sorry, bear with me here, guys. But we, yeah, there we go. All right. There we go. I don't I don't know what you were doing, but uh, you, uh, you ruined I mean, my open. Sorry, buddy. It's okay. <laughs> I'm sure it'll happen again. Yeah, there we are. All right, we're all, we're all good now. Settle in. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. But we are going to have a great time here for hour number two because I get to bring in, along with Ruben, one of my best friends in wrestling. I am thrilled to death to bring in the senior editor of WrestleZone. Matt Black is here, baby. What's going on? What's up, man? How you doing? Oh, I'm. Hey, I'm, it's another Sunday morning here in Las Vegas, my friend. Another Sunday morning in Vegas. How are you? Uh, I'm all right. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. okay. I'm doing. I'm doing well. I'm happy to be here. Well, we are happy to have you with that incredible collection of stuff behind your head. <laughs> Just, if you're on the live stream, you can see it. It's uh, it is, he is I loaded it. up. It's great. Yeah, you ought to. You ought to come out to uh, Wrestle Connects here in Las Vegas on September 14th. You get some more stuff. Oh, I think I have enough stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they did have a, uh, a a gigantic WWE and um, WWF booth at Comic Con when I was there a couple weeks ago, uh, featuring a lot of the old figures and a lot of the different lines of uh, of posable figures. Um, it was, it it was massive. It was like a 30 by 30 booth. So that was a fun time as well. Yeah. Yeah. The, the amount of wrestling collectibles that are out there from the last several decades, it's, it's staggering. Yeah. You, you, you could probably fill to fill a gigantic like department store building with just decades of wrestling memorabilia. And you would be, you'd have all the shelves filled and ready to go. It's, uh, it's it's mind boggling how much stuff is out there if if you want to go out there and try to go after it. Well, so there you go, guys, shopping away. And like I said, we'll we'll be at WrestleConnects. Um and I'll just mention it real quick, Saturday, September fourteenth, at the Tuscany Suites. So book that up now, guys. Check it out. Just WrestleConnects C O N N E X on Facebook and Instagram. So take a look. Matt and Ruben, I I want to back up a week here just to give you guys a shot at this because SummerSlam was an interesting day. Yeah. Interesting day. Oh, the Judgment Day gets exploded. Four titles change hands. Your thoughts overall on SummerSlam. Matt, did you like it? Yeah, I thought it was a good show. It didn't blow me away. Like, the show didn't blow me away or, or anything, but I thought I thought the show was good. I also skipped the three-hour pre-show, so that probably helped matters. Uh, <laughs> but like the the main the main show itself, I enjoyed it. Yeah, Ruben, what'd you think? I mean, I loved it. I thought that the the it was a little bit a, a too much to my mind of uh, turnover and turmoil, but 
that's a product of having the company being in a state of flux still over the past two, three years. You want to get the play to a place where you're like, all right, now we can tell our stories, right? And the only title that has remained in the same person's hands since WrestleMania is Cody Rhodes at this point after the SummerSlam. So there is a lot of turmoil, a lot of changeover happening. But as it pertains to the story, I thought that all of the stories that they were telling with SummerSlam were told well. I thought that the action was good. There wasn't a real obvious terrible botch uh, or or downer match to my mind um it was a good show uh I, I mean i'm from ohio so i loved that it was in cleveland uh you know i love all that stuff so i thought it was a good show i was happy with it well i was also reading about SummerSlam for next year which is going to be in minneapolis and they're wanting to go two days no, that's that's actually 2026 or 2026 2025 is location is yet to that's be right announced. sorry my my apologies i i for some reason, I'm, my gut instinct that says it's overseas, but sure. I have I have, no, I have nothing to back that up. You, I almost feel like they're waiting for all in to be done to to announce to announce that they're going to be over in the London area. That's just my guess, but it's it's very weird that we have 2026 date, but we don't have 2025. Yeah, very true. And the two day SummerSlam that. You know, right now that they're they're planning on. Do you guys think that SummerSlam should be two days long? I mean, I I feel like it's going to take a little bit away from WrestleMania, um, you know, just the special of the two days of it. But is it is SummerSlam worthy of being a two day event? Is it too close to WrestleMania? I, I'm I'm kind of torn on this, to be very honest with you, um, Ruben. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm fine with it. I think. Uh... You know, it is only, what, four months after WrestleMania. But if they're going to try to do, let's say, three big tentpole events a year, that's one every four months. They're trying to turn SummerSlam into Summer Mania. Uh, I don't mind a multi-day event, personally. It's a lot to put on the fans. It's a lot to put on the people to try to keep up with everything. But personally, I don't mind it. If they have... The, if they're being given the hours to put it on television, if they have the talent to be able to put on matches, I'm good with it. What do you think, Matt? Uh, the, here's the thing. WWE is in a hot period right now. And as long as they can sell the tickets and they can sell out both nights, go for it. Because we, we, we all know wrestling goes and ebbs and flows, ups, ups and downs. Five years from now, there might not be a demand for a two-night SummerSlam. So, you know, get a couple years to two night summer slams in and if the business drops, you can revert it back to one night and they leave the two nights for for, for their biggest show of the year with WrestleMania. Right right now, I'd say strike while the iron's hot. Fair enough. Okay. I'm I'm down with you guys. You're all good. Now, I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about the passing of Kevin Sullivan in, in detail. And we lost Kevin. Uh, he was in an accident earlier this year and apparently a some sort of complication with a blood clot uh, took him away from us. But with Kevin Sullivan and his legacy, Kevin, I feel, is one of the most underrated people in professional wrestling. And I think it was more maybe of a time where you know, he hit a stride in the early 80s, right around when Hulkamania was just getting started. So everybody... I wouldn't say they missed the work in Florida that he did, but it was just at a time where it was just starting to get on cable TV and just rolling out. And then he did the work in WCW right before the NWO. So I think a, a lot of people really underestimate his impact in the industry. And of course, incredibly influential backstage in terms of his booking and working with people and, you know, I really think that Kevin deserves much more of a place in pro wrestling history than I think some people in the modern day are willing to give him. Uh, you know, it's it's a tough day for everybody, and you could see that with everyone pouring out their condolences all over pro wrestling and Kevin's gone. Uh, Matt, do you feel like Kevin's career is a little bit underrated? Uh, I mean, I'll be perfectly honest. I... I didn't grow up with a lot of Kevin Sullivan. Like, like you said, for me, my first real memories of Kevin Sullivan's like the Dungeon of Doom, 
Hulk Hogan WCW stuff. Like, I didn't see a lot of his stuff in the 80s because I was mainly a WWF kid. So I didn't see a lot of what he was doing until I was introduced to him in WCW. So I know him a lot more for his booking mind and what he's done behind the scenes for companies like WCW and whatnot during the Monday Night Wars than I do for him as an in-ring competitor. Um, but, I mean, it's a, it's a generational thing. You know, like, if... I, I don't want to name I don't want to name anybody specific, but let's say just say wrestler X from WWE died tomorrow and they're an active active WWE superstar right now, maybe have held championships in the past. There'd be a lot more outpouring of fan support for that wrestler because they're in this generation and there's something that everybody that's watching today knows and understands. I don't think a lot of people I don't think a lot of the wrestling fans that are watching today grew up in the era that they were able to watch and appreciate what Kevin Sullivan brought to the industry. Ruben, uh, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, it is it is hard when you have people from previous generations and you don't see the work that they put in. Um, I liken this a lot to when a, a writer or a comedian dies that inspired a popular show that we like now. Um, oftentimes you'll see someone pass away and then all of your favorite writers will be like, I can't believe that this person I've never heard of passed away, uh, because they were so good and prolific in the sixties, seventies, eighties, nineties. But, uh, you know, the people who write the Simpsons now were fans of the Simpsons when they were kids, but the people who wrote the Simpsons when they were kids were inspired by the previous generation. And Kevin Sullivan is that for, you know, Diamond Dallas Page, Jake the Snake Roberts, William Regal, like these names that you still recognize, but they are a little bit older than the current generation. All of those people are pouring out condolences and you cannot help but recognize how they all talk about him. They talk about him with reverence and respect and understanding of who he was and where he came from. Um, he had a really unique career uh, as a you know, he, he had such a wide X axis of jobs and then tall, I'm sorry. Yeah. Tall Y axis of accolades in all of those careers. So it's a really unique career that we just don't really talk about because most of it happened in the, you know, eighties and nineties, uh, and sort of not, not on the same echelon or on the same television shows, uh, as some of our favorites. So, uh, you know, but you when you think about people who are like your favorite wrestler's favorite wrestler, Kevin Sullivan's one of those names that will always come up. Yeah, I remember when I first started watching wrestling um, in the early '80s and picking up copies of Pro Wrestling Illustrated and The Wrestler, and I opened the magazines and here's this crazy, devilish kind of dude down in Florida doing all this crazy stuff. And I was like, oh, my God, this this might be the scariest man on the planet. You would just read all the stories and see the pictures. And then all of a sudden, one of my cable networks picked up Florida Championship Wrestling. So I got to see some of Kevin's work down there. And you know, it was it was just it was so far ahead of its time. I mean, and people were so scared of him. I mean, and they were. They were doing stuff in parking lots and, you know, threatening him and just being, uh, you know, he, he had that character down and people were highly influenced by what Kevin did. And, you know, so many stars over the years have gone down that supernatural route. And I think Kevin was the one that truly opened that up. He really did. And, you know, and then, of course, he did the Dungeon of Doom thing with Hulk Hogan and was working behind the scenes so much with WCW. But Kevin was just an absolute genius when it came to professional wrestling. And he is absolutely going to be missed. And uh, I see uh, some comments in the chat box, by the way. Uh, Coach Rosie is here and said Kevin Sullivan had a great podcast. Yes, he did. Fascinating stuff. Incredible stories from Kevin. But I would tell everybody, I don't know. I, I can't remember if WWE has the Florida Championship Wrestling um, archives. Mm. I'd have to I'd have to double take a look on that, but if you can go back and watch that, and I really Kevin was one of the ones that helped bring Dusty Rhodes to national prominence too, because that feud yeah. 
was known all over the country. I mean, people were just raving over that one. So, you know, did some wild stuff. I just, and I had just seen a clip with him in a promo with um, Captain Cactus Jack and Buzz Sawyer. That was just ridiculous. Kevin was at his finest. So I know a lot of people will be missing Kevin, and we'll look forward to you know seeing how uh, any arrangements and everything. But you know, if we can help the family out, certainly isn't going to hurt. Now, speaking of getting a little crazy, we're having this battle. Roman Reigns is back. The bloodline is now in full force with the 2.0 against Roman. We'll see who else he brings in. But are we noticing the hints, guys, about the Ula Fala? The dreaded Ula Fala, if you don't know what that is, the Roman Reigns, when he was dubbed the tribal chief, was given uh, this bouquet to go around his neck. And I do apologize. I wish I'd had that sitting up here because I actually had the definition of what the Ula Fala is. But mm. but it, it's a Samoan symbol of being uh, being the big dog. Yeah. And there seems to be some hints. I don't know if you watch SmackDown, but hints about that Ula Fala is corrupting people. That Oh, that's fun. Yeah. So when we get into the supernatural, because if you notice, you know, Solo got in and now he's acting a little crazy. And, uh, you know, one of the other guys in the bloodline, I can't remember who it was off the top of my head, was holding it. But you saw him kind of pause Tom-a-tong- too. Tomatonga. Yeah, Tomatonga. The pause before he gave it back. Are we going to get a little Samoan supernatural stuff going on with this? What uh, Matt, you're shaking your head. What do you think about this? No, they're definitely not going to go that route. Roman's way too much in charge of his own uh, creative to let supernatural leak into the, the bloodline story. My problem with the whole, you know, the bloodline you know, necklace or whatever the, the terminology for it is. It's way too similar to the raw storyline right now with, with the friendship bracelet that CM Punk has mm. that seemingly has so much power over people Jeez. that it can decide wrestling matches. Um, I, I kind of <laughs> wish they would choose one or the other. Um, be, I feel like doing both on Raw and SmackDown right now kind of feels, kind of feels repetitive. Ruben, what do you yeah. Think? Yeah, I, I, I'm. I mean, I was kind of excited when you mentioned that there'd be a supernatural aspect, but you're right that Roman has too much control over uh, his career and his character at this point. Um, I like the story. I like what they're doing to evolve the story. I also like that Roman got to have some time off for once. uh, And that when he returned, he got appreciation from the fans for kind of the first time in his career. uh, To his face, at least. Like, obviously, the thank you Roman chance happened after WrestleMania, after he'd left the building. Um, So it's exciting for me to see him get the face turn that he so desperately, you know, deserves now and that they tried to give him for 10 years. Uh, And I think it's an interesting, it's an interesting tack that they've taken in trying to shift the bloodline story. I don't know. Ultimately it boils down to, are you charismatic enough? Are you talented enough to carry it? And I don't know that I see that out of Solo. I like Solo. He's a good worker. He does, you know, he's a talented wrestler, but I don't know that he can carry it on the mic like that. He needs a Paul Heyman. He needs a a guy to talk for him, in my opinion. So uh, I like the direction the story is headed. I need someone to step up on the mic a little bit. Uh, I also need the bloodline to be scary again. I need them to win a bunch of matches in a row against good opponents. And until the bo- both of those things happen, I mean, I'm not, it's not going to be my favorite thing to watch every week. Matt, you were, it was funny when uh, Ruben talked about Roman Reigns finally getting the, uh, the face turn. I saw you kind of smile and shake your head a little bit. What, what do you think about that? Yeah, I, I, I mean, they, they tried to, they tried to shove him down people's throats as a baby face for several years, and mm-hmm. it was vehemently re- rejected time and time again. <laughs> this one, this one happened organically. It yep. obvious, the best face and heel turns in professional wrestling always happen organically. It's not about creative forcing you to pick a side. It's about 
the fans adjusting their own mindset as a storyline plays out and decides the path that that wrestler takes. And those are always the most successful heel and face turns in wrestling history. Now, and one more thing on the Ula Fala, by the way. You don't get the Ula Fala just by picking it up and grabbing it. Someone in the, some elder needs mm. to present that to you. Okay. Would I suggest that that elder that presented it to him would be the rock? Sure. That would make sense. I mean, there's, you know, that, that is a, an existing character in this story arc, uh, to not use the rock. If he's able to be used would kind of be foolish. He's, you know, one of, if not the biggest movie star, uh, in Hollywood, he is one of, if not the biggest name in the history of professional wrestling, if that is an option, that seems like a shoe in Yeah, man, I, th- I really think they're setting up Rock Roman for WrestleMania. I really do. Well, the, the original, the, they, they wanted to do Cody and, Cody and Rock. Yeah. But, like, if, if... I don't know how many more years they have of Rock, personally. And if they really want to get this Roman-Rock match done, they might just want to pull the trigger on it next year. Uh... They, they, they say there's no time like the present, but honestly, not having that go down at WrestleMania 40 was probably a blessing in disguise for WWE because they'd much rather have Roman in that baby face position against the heel rock than a, than a baby face rock going up against the heel Roman. So letting Roman get that big win over the rock at WrestleMania would make him in a good way as a baby face. So... Yeah, I, I I know the the initial plan was to do Cody and Rock, but I, I'd I'd rather I'd rather see a babyface Roman against heel Rock personally. Yeah, I think it would be a lot of fun. So we do have to take a break, guys, and I am running a little behind. But when we come back, speaking of that Cody Rhodes guy, are we seeing the steps towards the showdown with his old power, Andy? Is it coming? Is it coming soon? We'll talk about what's going on with Bash at Berlin and where that story's going with Matt Black from WrestleZone and Ruben Bressler on the Mark Hoke Show. Stick around, everybody. We'll be right back. One oh one five FM K Don. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host. Mark Hoke. And we are back on the Mark Hoke Show here on KDON 101.5 FM. It is the talk of Las Vegas, the best in pro wrestling news and entertainment. We are thrilled to have you with us, and we certainly certainly appreciate everybody who is out there following us on our social media and YouTube. And if you got a second, certainly appreciate you hitting that subscribe button on YouTube. That would just bring me so much joy. You know, I... I Put on my own Ula Fala, just for all of you. You know, I'd do it. So take that. Take a second. Click on subscribe on YouTube. Make me happy. All right, Matt Black uh, on the show with us from WrestleZone, senior editor, king of the hill over there. We're waiting for Ruben Bressler to get back from the restroom <laughs> on the live stream. But we'll, uh, he'll be back shortly, I'm sure. I hope. Unless he had some bad LA street hey, food or something. Nature man. calls, man. Sometimes you got to go, you got to go. It's all good. Well, as we were leading in from the last segment, the Cody Rhodes Randy Orton match that I won at WrestleMania are the first steps being laid for this because we are going to be having at the Bash at Berlin Cody Rhodes and Kevin Owens. And of course, Kevin and Randy have been helping Cody out along the way for a while. We have occasionally seen Randy's eyes lustfully gaze on the WWE. Undisputed Championship. First, Matt, do you like this matchup with Cody and Kevin? Just because Kevin was playing this reluctant, I don't deserve it line before he finally accepted the match. But I feel like this is going to be tying in with Randy somehow. I I just got that feeling. So what do you, what do you think about that, Matt? I mean, I think it. I think it'll play back. I think it'll play back to Randy. But I don't think. I don't think that's the story for the time being. They're doing. They're focused on Randy and Gunther at the moment. That that botched finish at uh, Ken and Quinn in the ring really came back to 
pay dividends for them right now to give Gunther a first credible challenger heading into Bash in Berlin. Um, but I, I like the Kevin Owens story because it made sense. And Kevin Owens spent an entire backstage segment explaining why everything about it made sense and why he was getting that shot. Because Kevin Owens is always the the WWE character that speaks for the fan. And he calls out the things that don't make sense. And he calls out the tropes. He's almost like, he's like WWE's version of Deadpool. Where Kevin Owens <laughs> can speak through the fourth wall. And everybody gets it. And everybody understands the joke. And he's he's just, he's real. He's a real character doing real things in a world of, you know, professional wrestling. So I love I love the Cody Kevin Owens match. I think it's going to be really good. I think one of the reasons Kevin Owens will be revealed to be reluctant that he didn't want to take the shot is Kevin Owens is always that type of guy who would always do whatever it took to become champion. And I think Kevin's afraid of tapping into that darker side of Kevin Owens again against his friend and Cody to try to take that championship away from him. I think that's going to come into play this month. As far as Orton and Cody at WrestleMania, I think that's happening in a bad blood, man. I like I don't I don't I don't think we're I don't think we're waiting until WrestleMania. I think Orton and Cody is happening sooner rather than later. Um, but if they can somehow manage the the drag and stretch that out to Mania, that would be nuts. Ruben, what do you think? Uh I I, I just wandered in like a child in the middle of a movie. Uh, but I love Kevin Owens. Um, if that's the conversation, I think that the, yeah, WWE's Deadpool is exactly what he is. Uh, every promo is exposition loaded, which I love. Um, and you know, I, I, I think that having Cody as champion puts WWE in such a weird spot because on the one hand, you have this really lovely baby face, kumbaya kind of attitude but on the other hand where's the where's the clash where's the drama right like who is who doesn't like cody what like that was what made having the bloodline in charge so compelling that was always what made having the rock at the top or john cena at the top so compelling is that not everyone loved them we need somebody to come in and be like nah enough of this 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 is this is garbage and to kind of rock the boat a little bit. That's what I'm looking forward to. Do we get a heel turn out of Kevin? I mean, I'll tell you what. I would be I, – I don't think he's going to win. But, boy, it would be intriguing, though, wouldn't it? Sure. It would be. It, it would definitely be surprising, and no one would see it coming if, if they wanted to go that route. I, I, don't, I don't foresee them doing that. Um. But yeah, it would definitely shock a lot of people if they did a title change over there. Oh, could you? I mean, especially after five and four title changes at SummerSlam, I don't expect any titles changes at Bash in Berlin. Oh man, could you imagine if Randy cost Cody the, the undisputed championship? Just in a foul mood, maybe losing to Gunther. Oh, I, I don't oh. think Randy's going to be in any physical shape to come out for that match after this <laughs> match with Gunther over there. Yeah, good Agreed. point. He'd be like, "I'm good in the ice bath, fam. I'm. I, I don't. I don't want to come out and do no run-ins." I think that the next. I think I. I honestly, earnestly believe that the the next champion after Cody has to be Solo. I earnestly believe that in order for the storyline to make any sense. It either has to be Roman, The Rock, or Solo, who takes it away. Because otherwise, like, well, how are we paying off the bloodline? How are we paying off Cody? Like, I don't, I don't, unless there's something I'm not seeing, I don't know where the story goes if Randy wins it or Kevin Owens wins it. Or, you know, this is, this is why, like, I love AJ Styles. It just would never have happened for AJ to have won it in the way that he did. So, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm overthinking it. Well, that's what we do when we talk pro wrestling. We we all tend to overthink it a little bit, and sometimes the easiest solution is the simplest one or the, yeah. the right one. So, uh, we got some comments in the chat box, by the way. Uh, Mark Cho is just going at it in there. Says he acknowledges my OTC, the original tribal chief. Of course, uh, Solo is uh, is this generation comma this generation comma comma. comma with the urn necklace. Okay, that. That, that's we were talking about that. And he also said they have rock till he's ninety. Yeah, he is on, he is on the TKO board. So yes, 
And uh, Gamer Bear says, Dwayne is older, but I feel he exudes much jock energy to feel like a credible, in quotes, elder. Hmm, interesting. So. He, was- he feels like he's too much of an active person to to be an elder. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's what it says. Uh, so- Dwayne is older, but I feel like he exudes too much jock energy to feel like a credible elder. So, well, you know who they haven't used yet if they want an elder. Oh, do it. Do it. Rikishi. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, they haven't they haven't brought him back. He's and maybe, he's, maybe he's they there. haven't brought him back cuz he won't shut his mouth about the current WWE storylines on his yeah. podcast. <laughs> yeah. My yeah. god, dude, you're just <laughs> Yeah, shooting you're not yourself doing in the your foot. Son, you're not doing your sons any favors right now, Keish. Yeah, for Calm sure. Calm down, man. <laughs> yeah, because I mean that would you know that would be another guy if he could still go to bring him in with the Usos and yeah, you know. I mean it'd be great. But you're right, he's shooting himself. He's he's biting off his nose despite his own face. Yeah. So, Rikishi, take it easy, bud. See, podcasts are good, but they can also be a very negative thing for for people sometimes. That is. For Especially sure. if you're still in the industry. Yep. A hundred percent. If you're this out is... of the industry, fine, go for it, do whatever you want. But if you're still in the industry and you're still involved and you have family in there and move. Yeah. This is Dang, like Tina dangerous. Fey. This is like when Tina Fey went on Bo and Yang's podcast and was like, you're telling your real opinions as a worker in Hollywood? I don't think so, honey. Like if you, you don't want, you, if you're still trying to get any amount of actual work, you can't you can't do that on a podcast. Yeah. Well, podcasters can cuz I'm never going to be on the show. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens with Rikishi. And also at Bash of Berlin we were talking about this Gunther and Randy Orton. So the flubbed finish at King of the Ring gets the mm-hmm. rematch and it ends up being for the World Championship. I you guys excited about this one? Uh, a little Gunther Orton action coming back in Berlin in a few weeks? Anybody? I'm. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, I love their match at Cannon Queen of the Rain, but it was ruined by the finish. Right. But then again, that finish is what is bringing us this rematch. Because if that finish, if that finish was clean and Orton's shoulders were on the mat, they wouldn't have a storyline reasoning to go back to this right now. So I think it's a great excuse to bring Orton over to Raw for a few weeks to mess around with Gunther uh, heading into this event. Because I think WWE's biggest problem right now and we're seeing this with the cody title reign is while they're really good with building the top stars that they have right now they haven't really solidified who's you know quote unquote up next so when a title changes hands that there's a line of challengers awaiting to give the new champion credible opponents and i think that's what cody suffered from for his reign right now, but Gunther locks right into an immediate match with Randy Orton, which is why Cody, if would, if he would have won the world title last year at WrestleMania 39, going right into a feud with Brock Lesnar would have been perfect, yeah. but he hasn't had any, and I love AJ Styles. He's one of my favorites of all time, but WWE hasn't used him properly in years. And he hasn't even been on TV since he lost the, the, uh, the rematch to Cody at, uh, at Clash at the Castle, they're letting them go do pro wrestling Noah and working the Japan tours and stuff. It's just like you clearly didn't care about AJ. You just okay, great guy. Both of them are from Georgia. They've never fought each other. They're gonna have a great match. But there wasn't a great story there. Right. And that that's where I feel like when they establish a better plethora of upper big car talents to be able to push them into the main event is when WWE will thrive even larger than they are right now. Yeah, that is interesting you bring that up, Matt, that after the Bloodline situation and, and Cody happened at WrestleMania, yeah, there wasn't a, a big line behind them to line up any challengers. I mean, the AJ thing felt kind of forced. You now, this thing with Kevin Owens feels a little a little forced to me. You know, it's, it was just a, a little bit out of the blue so, yeah, that is kind of, you know, I hadn't really thought of it that way because there's a, there's a line a mile long to go after Gunther. I mean, that, you know, that group with Drew and Punk and, you know, now Seth's going to be out for a little while apparently. 
But there's yeah, a there's they, a they could they could use another shuffling of their rosters. Like I know they just did the draft a few months ago, but I man, it could it would not hurt them to do a little bit of shuffling of the deck. And with Raw and SmackDown both going to be on USA from September through the end of the year, they they can use excuses why these things are being shifted because they're all you know under the same USA Network banner. So they they could get away with some they could get away with some sly tactics. Um, for the rest of this year, once both shows are on USA, and I think they should before Raw moves to Netflix in 2025. Or they could just never do the draft again and just <laughs> just print everything light back that, together. Light that thing on fire and just let everybody go where they want to put them <sighs> instead of saying you're locked in here and then they show up somewhere else and you're like, wait, they were drafted to Raw. They can't be on SmackDown. Just, uh, I know they get good ratings with it, but there's got to be a different way to do it. I don't know. I, I think they'd be better off just locking the titles. And if you're if you're holding this if you're holding the SmackDown title, you're on SmackDown until you drop it. And if you're holding the Raw title, you're on Raw until you drop it. But once you drop that title, you could shift back and forth between the two brands, and I that, like that. that would actually free up a lot more um, storyline opportunities for the roster as a whole. For sure, I think that that's a really good concept in general. Of if you have a title, it, the title is connected to the brand, but no one else is. I think that makes a lot more sense, and that allows the different, like for example, the tag teams to like. There's a main tag team challenger. It's over here this week. It's over here the next week, and that lets you sort of mix and match and change up your your matches anyway. I like that a lot. Yeah. So just just let that draft go. Just let it go. You know, maybe do a ping pong ball drawing once a year and have some fun, but nah, no drafts. I'm I'm done with it. I just, it just drives me crazy. Uh, one other thing that drives me crazy is losing bets. And I I got to tell you, if you want to go and have a great time betting on wrestling, because if you follow this show or like Matt's shows and everything that he does, you'll get the best wrestling advice, and you could go on BetOnline.ag and you can win. That's right. You can bet on wrestling on betonline.ag. They got all the pay-per-views up there and premium live events. Plus, of course, you can bet on all sorts of sports, politics, celebrities. I mean, just crazy stuff on that site. So if you want to check it out, you can actually get a 50% matching bonus up to $1,000. If you go on markhokeshow.com and click on the links right now, there's a code there, BOL1000. And that's pretty good. I'm handing you 500 bucks right now. So please go check that out. BetOnline.ag. All right. Let's keep this thing rolling. We've got another segment to go with Matt Black from WrestleZone and Ruben Bressler joining me on the Mark Hope Show. Just an awesome time as we get ready now all in and bash at Berlin. and Just it, what a great time to be a wrestling fan. It's incredible. Stick around, everybody. We'll be right back with more on the Mark Hope Show on KDON and the Odyssey app. Be right back. One zero one five FM K Don. You're listening to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Vegas, The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Now here again is Mark Hoke. Let's do this one more time, shall we? Best in pro wrestling news and entertainment on K Don. 101.5 FM Las Vegas, the Odyssey app, A-U-D-A-C-Y. If you haven't downloaded it, well, you're a loser. Just go get it now. Now! A-U-D-A-C-Y. And, of course, we're streaming on YouTube, Facebook, and X. And thank everybody for being with us today and enjoying the show. Comments firing in the chat box. Let's see what else we got. Oh, Jesse Hyde, who started a Vince McMahon fight last week. Uh, the Rock, let's see the Rock won't support Harris. He su- he will support what? Trump with Hulk Hogan, okay. and The Rock and Trump will be the masterminds of the bloodline in the Fox era of SmackDown before USA gets SmackDown. Does he know SmackDown's going to USA in like two weeks? Uh, Jesse, what is he? What, what is even this message? <laughs> what are we doing here? <laughs> Jesse, uh, Jesse apparently likes to do some crystal meth before the show. No, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> the Rock and Trump. Okay, that would be. Um, yeah, we had Hogan. Hogan was on the the, the Republican National Convention. Yeah, it's, it's 
Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm a little confused on this one, but that's all right. That's what our chat box is for. That's right. Oh, golly, we have a great time. It's, it's uh, for something. <laughs> oh, man. Well, we've got news, guys. WWE's going to Italy. I think my prediction's coming true that we are never going to see one of the, the lower-level uh, premium live events in the United States ever again. They're they're mm. just going to take the foreign money and and run. But yeah, so hey, WWE man. next year is going to Italy. I wouldn't go as far as ever again. But like I mentioned earlier, they're hot right now. Yeah, to get the money while you can, and if yeah. you can run all your your B level um, PLEs overseas and charge people out, do you know what for it? Because they are. And people are paying it. Do it while you can. Because that money night might not be around forever. So, yeah. Let let let, let everybody else have a chance. Because let's face it. The United States and Canada have kind of dominated WWE's PLE world for a very long time. And if they can go around the world and give other people shots. And we get afternoon PLEs on Saturdays. Which I actually am a really big fan of. <laughs> yeah, I know that. Um, Sure. Let's let's have some more. Yeah, I mean, it, the, I know that they were charging like $400 a ticket in France when they were there. I mean, they are just taking people over the coals on this. And yeah, I don't blame them. I mean, that I French mean, crowd was the best. Uh, All the overseas crowds are great. Yeah. yeah. I, I, love, I love when they go overseas because they hardly ever get wrestling. Yeah. So when they go there, they it's there for a PLE. They're super excited. And actually, you notice these overseas crowds are starting to influence the crowds over here. Yeah. Because all these crowds are seeing people sing Randy Orton's voices and stuff like that. And now people over here are starting to do it too. So if they can create that atmosphere, like, Oh man, that's so cool. We should do that too. It should, it, it should be great for wrestling across the board. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's great. I mean, I have no problem with them going overseas for these events because you're, you're building wrestling up around the world. That just means it's going to be stronger. It makes the industry better. And you know, these people are going to be very thankful for the opportunity. Like you said, Matt, I mean, you know, when are they, you know, when are they going back to, to France? When are they going to go back to uh, you know, go to Italy for another big show or Berlin? I mean, it's going to be years. Yeah, I'm it's sure it's just live. It's always just live events. Like yeah. they never go over there for like a raw or a SmackDown or heaven forbid a PLE. So like the fact that they're doing that now has, has people very excited. Yeah, so get ready for WWE Italian style. Get out your pizza and spaghetti, kids. It's going to be I've awesome. Heard those, I've heard those crowds are pretty wild. Yeah. So I mean, I, I'm excited to see what one of those looks like. I've heard good things from based out of the live event reactions to those shows. So uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what that looks like next year. Yeah. Yep. So, Italian soccer crowds are football crowds are incredible. Uh, I mean, all, all over Europe, they have a specific type of flavor, but particularly in Italy, there is, it's very similar to the French uh, wrestling crowd. Actually, you have the chanting, you have the unison, you have the, um, the passion and the excitement uh, and the loudness. So I'm real excited for that. Mark Joe in the chat box says, let's use Santino. Sure. Oh, yeah, heck they're, yeah. They're, they're Please. Working with DNA right now. Why not? Please bring Santino <laughs> back for the Italian show. Oh, That'd be so good. Are you kidding me? Really? That's all right. Let's do it. Why not? Why not? It's pro wrestling. That'd be awesome. Speaking of a why not, I don't know if you guys saw this trademark that Tony Khan and AEW filed for. Meet Mayhem. That's L-F-G. right, everybody. Meet Mayhem is a new AEW trademark that they're getting. So, you know, we we didn't get the Meat Madness match. They had to postpone it because of injuries. But I would imagine we will be seeing some sort of large man, multi-man battle of blad, boom, and, you know, it's it's just going to get ugly. But Yeah, we never got the Big E versus Goldberg match that we all wanted, but maybe this will come close. <laughs> Yeah, I, I look. I I think AEW has been very smart in terms of their trademarks. They don't typically trademark anything until they're right around the corner from using it. Like Tony Khan's gone on record that he wanted to do hologram in 2020, but they didn't even trademark hologram until like the end of last year. Yeah. So 
when they when you have something like Meet Mayhem trademarked, to me, I feel like that's coming sooner rather than later. And I think that would be a perfect match to introduce it all out in Chicago next month. Oh. Because the the big meet chance really got started in Chicago last year when Miro took on um, Powerhouse Hobbs. Sure. So bring Meet Mayhem to back to Chicago for all out. Hopefully Miro is healthy and ready to go. Maybe Keith Lee's ready to come back. Like if they could get all these big men in there and have just like some kind of throw down, like big six or eight man meet, meet mayhem match. I think people would, would eat that up. Agreed. They would, they would eat that meat up. That's right. <laughs> and you could uh, bring in Abe oh, Froman, no. the sausage King of Chicago to be the referee. Hell like, yeah. My God. That's an A-plus <laughs> reference. Thank you very much. Yes, appreciate that, Ruben. Well, guys, hey, that's going to wrap it up. Matt, real quick, everybody a lowdown on what you got going on. we got a few seconds here. Uh, just to check out WrestleZone.com. You know, we're uh, daily wrestling news, rumors, reports, interviews, you name it, we have it. You know, if you're looking for what's going on in the world of professional wrestling, it's going to be covered at WrestleZone. There you go. WrestleZone.com, everybody, take a look and you know, see what's going on. Matt does great work over there, and we certainly appreciate him working with the show and being a great friend to us too. So appreciate that, Matt. Thank you. I always happy to be here. All right. So Ruben Bressler, Matt Black, we got to go, but just want to let everybody know the website has been turned upside down a little bit at markhokeshow.com. We have a lot of our recent interviews are now up on the website. So you can just go right there. They're in a big pile on the one page. Sponsor page has been updated. And we're going to be putting more different things up there. Patron programs up there if you want to help support the show. Two bucks a month. That's all I'm asking. That's not bad. And we're going to be doing some pretty cool stuff coming up in the future. Of course, WrestleMania is coming, so you might want to get in that program. Thanks to everybody for listening. We do appreciate it. We will catch you next time on The Mark Oak Show. Follow us on Twitter at Mark Oak Show. Facebook, The Mark Oak Show. MarkOakShow.com. And subscribe on YouTube at The Mark Oak Show. We'll see you next week, everybody. Have a great day, Las Vegas. Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show, like us on Facebook at The Mark Hoke Show, and visit MarkHokeShow.com to keep up with everything happening with the show. And remember to check out all of our archive shows on YouTube at The Mark Hoke Show and download our podcasts at MarkHokeShow.Podbean.com and all your favorite podcast outlets. So join The Mark Hoke Show family today, and thanks for listening.